So welcome everybody to the Housing Partnership, February 6, 2023. It's good to see all of you and a few of you I haven't seen in a few months. So anyway, that's really great. <clears throat> I see we have one guest so far. Um, I think that's Galad, right? Yes, hi everybody. I can't change my name on the settings, but I'm Gilad, not Community Action Special Projects. Okay. So Gilad's here today to give us an update on the Resiliency Hub and the Wareforce and Fourth WIS, right, Gilad? Uh, yeah, um, Keith had reached out and asked me to join the, the meeting. I'd been meaning to come to one of these for a while um, and, and learn more. I think I went to one a couple months ago, actually, and just sat in and listened. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be here both as a, a participant to, to listen and also as a representative of Community Action, um, and I can share some updates about the, the Resilience Hub and answer any questions you have. Okay, great. Um, so you're you're a couple down on the um, agenda, so let's get started. I'm, 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 I don't think it'll be that long, but anyway, we're glad you're here. I'm looking forward to hearing an update. All right. <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. So anyway, we need to go to approval of minutes for January 9th. Does anybody- I we approve the minutes from January 9th as submitted. Anybody second who is there? I'll second. Okay, so let's take a vote. Hannah. Uh, approved. Edgardo. Yes. Gordon? Yes. Richard? Yes. Me? Yes. Now, I think that Ace and Hannah, Ace and Sarah and Bev, you weren't at January's meeting, correct? Correct. Am I remembering that correctly? Okay. So you obviously can't vote, but I think we have enough votes to pass meetings have been, the meeting minutes have been approved. That was very quick. Okay. Do we have any updates from our subcommittee on the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund? Yeah, I can speak on our updates. Uh, we met yesterday and it was a nice meeting. Um, it was nice to have a very little gap between that meeting and this meeting. Um, we uh, mostly it was sort of a where do we go from here meeting. We talked about where the conversations have been over the past year and where some of the resistance has been to restarting the municipal housing trust fund, fund like some of the arguments against. Um, and then we each just kind of gave some action items for the three of us for things that we were going to do next in terms of research moving forward. I mean, one thing that we said is because the fund has gone inactive for this long, like there isn't a big rush on this project. And while it's something that we all want to see be reactivated, we have a lot of time to do our research and make a really compelling argument for it. Um, so uh, like Edgar knows somebody who's part of the Amherst Municipal Housing Trust Fund, and he's going to talk to that person, which is great. I was going to look at um, just other housing trust funds in Massachusetts and look at where their funding sources come from and their history and maybe like some of the unique projects that they've been able to fund as a result of the fund existing in different cities. And Gwen was also going to do some research just about what Northampton has historically done to um, support underserved communities in terms of like helping people get affordable housing. So we all have our action items. We're going to meet again next month, and that's that's kind of where we're going to go from here. Thank you, Hannah. So I'm wondering if people have questions, and also there were a number of you who weren't here last month. Any thoughts or comments or questions from you or anybody else? Uh, just a um, uh, question. Uh, did anyone take any minutes for that meeting or anything like that? Um, yeah, I can send some notes. They're just messy, so I need to write them better. Yeah, it, uh, a summary is fine. That, okay, that'd be great. Thank you. I'll send those to you, Keith. Um, Bev, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say, great. I'm glad you guys are continuing at this because I think it's 
uh, important. And uh, I missed a couple of meetings, uh, so didn't get my I could put my hand up to to help out. But if if I can help out in any way, just let me know. That would be great. Yeah. I mean, Bev, I'm sure you can be on the subcommittee if you want to. Okay, they know sure. how to reach out to anybody else. Comments, hands. No. Yeah. Uh, Galad has his hand up. Oh, Galad. Sorry, I, I might. This might be a sort of novice question, but um, I don't actually know a ton about the the trust fund. Does it exist? Is there actually a, a fund for housing for Northampton, or is this kind of the process of trying to figure out how to create one? Uh, yeah, so there there is um, actually a municipal affordable housing trust um, uh, uh, has been established, but it's been inactive for quite a few years. So we're looking at um, at the currently looking at the reasons, perhaps the reasons why and and whether it's worth looking into, uh, you know, reactivating it. If. If, if I could add to that, um, I think an important um, factor in the uh, conversation has been that some think um, that uh, with the CPA funds um, and CDBG and other existing resources, there's really not a need for additional funds. And uh, I find that incredible because I used to scrounge for funds for housing for a living. Um, and so I presume part of the research is to to kind of drill down on that question of need um, before deciding to go back and 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 make the case. Okay, Sarah, did you have your hand up? Okay, um, very good. Can can we move on? And for this subcommittee, you know, you can contact Beth, right? So I see that we've been joined by having a hard time seeing this tiny print, but is it Teresa Hammerly? Is that yes, right? Hi, I am just a citizen. I'm not um, a talent, you know, and I wanted to, I, I'm sorry, I'm late. I wanted to make a public comment. Go ahead. Um, so, great, thank you. Um, I'm with a group in town called Mothers Out Front, and uh, we have worked with another um, two groups. Um, one is Local Energy Advocates, and another one is the Center for Eco Technology. And we have um, supplied the Lilly Library and the Forbes Library with two kits that can be used to um, check out an induction cooktop hot plate and pans and information about the technology and about our organizations. Those are at the libraries and they'll be check outable um, in the very near future. Um, and I, my comment specifically is that um, Ashley from the Center for Ecotechnology is going to be um, giving a talk tomorrow at um, Forbes Library about induction cooktop and um, demonstrating the technology and showing our beautiful kits. Um, that is in the community room. And um, I'm almost positive it, it starts at six. Um, so that's what I, that's the message that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, that's the first part of the message. Please come to the talk. Um, and then the second part of the message is that, you know, Mothers Out Front is motivated to have people reduce the burning of fossil fuels. And when, you know, um, combined with um, renewable energy, the electric cooktop does just that. If anybody wanted to have a further discussion with Mothers Out Front or local energy advocates about assisting people and, and getting the technology um, even if it's a hot plate to people who um, otherwise are paying high cost for gas and, and polluting with gas cooktops. Um, we would love to be part of that conversation. We'd, we'd welcome you to, um, um, to join us. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Thank you very much for that important message from our sponsor, Mother's Out Front. You're like a great organization. Yeah, definitely. No. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so I'm going to excuse myself then and not um, stay for the rest of your meeting. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. Bye bye. All right. Let's move on to the next part of our agenda staff updates. Um, we have two of them. Um, first is the CHAPA engagement program. And Keith, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to. On the agenda, there. Um, I guess we kind of discussed the how the uh, affordable housing trust fund subcommittee, but we did have next steps for the trust fund, and I don't want to. I don't. Do we want to have a more of a discussion about this group? What we need to do to coordinate, or are we just going to leave it to uh, the the subcommittee? And if you have any, if you want to volunteer, or we'll wait on their report. Well, um, let's go back to Hannah for your opinion about that. Uh, so the the question is whether there are next steps for the housing the housing partnership should be making together as a decision or right yeah. Um, I I don't want to speak for everybody and maybe Edgar could weigh in on this also. I don't think so yet. I think maybe next month, like after our next housing partnership meeting, we may have more like um, uh, better information for you. I think we're still sort of in the inform information gathering stage and maybe there's like a presentation or something that's around the corner. But Edgar, do you agree with that? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the, the only next steps is uh, March 5th is our next subcommittee meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah. I, I forgot about the date. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the same thing, just make sure I get the uh, minutes. And then Hannah, when you send me uh, those, I have, I uh, deep in the, I, I have a link to the minutes from the early 90s about the trust fund. So if you want to look at it. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right, thank you guys so much for continuing. Despite my, like, reservations and doubts last month really appreciate that and yeah anyway that's great thank you all right Keith CHAPA engagement program sure I'll just quickly kind of go over the CHAPA and then we can uh, go into um, the resiliency hub and while uh, Galat is here um, so uh, with your endorsement um, and your, you know you guys uh, wanting to be part of that I did write up the application and sent it to CHAPA. Uh, it's a very easy chat, um, application. I just want to some, get some data points about you know, previous um, uh, zoning changes we've made, um, any type of community pushback, um, and then specifically if there's any projects that um, we want to kind of circle up around, circle the wagons around, uh, I guess, and get support for. So I did write the the uh, application for the Crafts Avenue, um, uh, um, you know, housing for homeless people that'll be behind City Hall. Um, you know, this is it's um, we haven't had a, a lot of projects like this. Uh, I think the Franklin Street housing uh, was the most um, similar. Um, but um, it's going to be downtown, so uh, we want to uh, be as best you know, advocates and uh, educating ourselves about the project and um, you know being out there. So I sent out, and I I wanted to bring the application to you all and just see if there was um, kind of anything you want to add. Um, but I built the timeline off of when. Um, the likely project would start construction, and I kind of pushed it back. Um, but I talked with Valley CDC, who um, bid on the project, and they're they're going to be ones uh, developing it. Um, and they um, they want to be more aggressive um, in their timeline with community engagement. Um, so really, by uh, if we go off the timeline that I presented, um, you know, I think June would be our kind of first meeting with all of our stakeholders. So prior to that, we would probably have, uh, so two groups really, there's a steering committee, which would be housing partnership, um, city staff, Valley CDC, and then a list of stakeholders, which is kind of the broader community um, and different people. 
Um, so uh, as soon as I uh, hear back from them, uh, we will start developing. If we if we're um, we're in, we'll start developing that timeline, and I'll have more details. Um, so, so Keith, um, there are three people at tonight's meeting who weren't here in January, and also Galad is here, and I think this is very relevant for sure. the Community Resilience Hub. Could you just go back and give just a very um, sort of basic explanation of what the Chapa thing would, how that would benefit Northampton? Yeah, so uh, well, first I'll just talk about the project briefly. Um, behind City Hall, there are some exorcist looking stairs that are quite dangerous and falling apart. Um, and it's just kind of a weird uh, area. And so the city uh, divided that parcel up and sold it to, uh, or I guess gifted it to housing, um, for a housing developer uh, with the intent to develop, um, you know, housing for homeless people. Um, so that bid went to Valley CDC. Um, and so we're in the planning stages of that. Um, now the program is through um, Community Housing Advocates and Planning Association, CHAP CHAPA, out of Boston. They're a nonprofit, um, very much like Mass Housing or um, MHP, which is um, helps with housing and uh, advocacy and legislation, things like that. So this is a training program. Um, there's no money involved, but um, their expertise would um, kind of help us develop um, this community engagement program. Um, so it'd be this really focused um, kind of uh, training, but also some meetings where we, we get together uh, with uh, the broader stakeholders, which would be community, business, um, housing advocates, uh, people that are interested. Um, but we also want to, you know, reach out to people that are abutters, um, people that, um, so it's kind of like a community education program. Um, you know, starting a project, we want to educate the, the, the public. Um, and if there's concerns from them, you know, we want to address that. Um, uh, but really it's, so for us, it's kind of like, you know, um, getting some training, but also focusing on a real project uh, and kind of re-energizing and hopefully creating a um, a natural kind of uh, stakeholder group that is throughout the city, because um, we have seen kind of resistance from during when a project comes down to the, the walk or where it is, um, the neighbors, um, uh, there there is some a small vocal minority that is opposed to it. Um, so we want to be that um, opposing voice, as it were. Okay, um, thanks, Keith. Questions, thoughts? Okay, so Keith, just just um, just say again, what are the next steps with this, and when can we expect what? Uh, the next steps, uh, they have the application. Um, I um, gave a pretty aggressive timeline. So like June would be our first meeting with stakeholders. So the broader community. So a month or two out from that, I imagine we'd have kind of our first meeting. So that's April, May or something like that. Um, so um, I, I'm just waiting. Uh, and uh, I did mention that in the application, hey, um, this is a pretty quick timeline, so um, please get back to us as soon as possible with uh, yay or nay. Uh, Bev, you had a question? Yeah. Um, again, I, th I think this is great. I um, who This is on behalf of the housing partnership, on behalf of the city, some combination. What would our yeah. role be? Yeah, um, so um, I applied, so I'm the the lead uh, agent yep. um, with, uh, you know, the lead stakeholder or lead steering committee uh, as the housing partnership, you know, with Valley CDC. Um, I did ask them if they wanted to, uh, the, wanted the support and wanted to be part of this. Um, they're going to be doing this regardless. Um, so they're kind of really excited to have, you know, uh, our, um, our warm bodies and our minds uh, kind of applied to this project. 
Um, but I think, you know, it's not just this project, but hopefully, you know, from this, we learn and kind of develop that um, the net, the, you know, community as a whole is uh, being more active and supporting and, and coming out. So. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, one of the ways that I see this and why I'm excited about it is I think it's a, First of all, it's a perfect thing for us to do as a housing partnership. And secondly, it's, it's going to be um, kind of the cheerleading component, right? For some affordable housing projects where we can counter some of the neighborhood opposition to such projects. So I'm excited about it. All right, well, thank you. If there are no further hands up and I don't see any, let us go on to the next agenda item, and that is UGALAD and an update on the Community Resilience Hub. Hi. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, there's a lot um, I, I could share, um, so I'll just start very kind of high level, um, and I'll, I'll leave it to you all to ask questions, and I can kind of dig in further from there. Um, so again, my name is Gilad Marone. Um, I've been working with Community Action for the past year. I'm the coordinator for the Community Resilience Hub. Um, I have a background in doing a lot of community development work, mostly in New Orleans, where I was for the past seven years, um, and have done some similar work uh, to, to what the hub is down there. Um, so the big news is that we got a building, um, that the city has purchased um, this church um, that was formerly owned by Eric Sewer. Uh, and Currently, we're thinking, I mean, there's there's still some um, assessment that needs to be done to really fully understand the scope of renovation that'll be needed for the building. Uh, but we're hoping it's one to two years out from now before we'd be able to start using the space. Uh, there's also a possibility we might be able to renovate the first floor first and be able to start using a sort of um, half of the space in, in the beginning. Uh, and it'll be shared between the Community Resilience Hub, as well as the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, primarily, the main space will be um, for coordinated services and resources um, that, that kind of comprises the hub. And then there will be some offices that will also be used by certain health and human service uh, departments that really overlap with the mission and work of the hub, such as the um, Department of Community Care and the new alternative responder team that's being established, um, as well as some of the DART program and possibly Hampshire Hope, other things that overlap with some of the needs of the uh, most vulnerable residents in our community who will be the, the sort of priority populations that the hub is serving. Um, so overall, the, the project's really entering a new phase now is this is a big milestone of getting a building. Um, and we've already been doing a lot of work to build a coalition of providers in the area of nonprofits, um, local grassroots groups, city departments, and other advocates um, and resource allies who are helping to find and coordinate resources and services, um, primarily for folks who are unhoused, folks who are experiencing severe mental or physical health crises, and folks living in poverty. Um, those are the sort of priority populations that the hub aims to serve most directly. However, there's a sort of broad vision for the hub um, in which it's really a community center that can serve everybody in the area. Um, and particularly during times of crisis or emergency, the idea is that the city would be able to sort of um, come and sort of take over, quote unquote. You know, let's say there was a big storm um, coming, the city would alert us, you know, 24 hours beforehand, and we would sort of flip um, the, the community resilience hub into an emergency response center. Um, so that's sort of big picture what the hub is and where we're going now that we we have this uh, sort of major accomplishment of, of securing a building. Um, and right now we're working to continue building the relationships and coalition of partners who would be providing services out of there um, and sort of really building that piece by piece. Uh, so we also have a pilot of the hub that's already running up at St. John's Church. Um, and we're sort of essentially testing and learning through that process, figuring out how to best coordinate services and resources in a single location, how we build the partnerships and partnership agreements that enable that to happen successfully rooted in values of trauma-informed care and harm reduction, um, and also figuring out ways to bring in new partners who haven't yet been part of it. Um, so I just threw a lot of information at you all, so I'm just going to pause there for a second um, and see if anyone has any questions or if I can clarify anything or share more about any topic in particular. Questions? 
guys. So I have a question and that is, um, I think, I, I don't know if you mentioned this because you mentioned so many things, but this will be a daytime place for folks who are homeless to come, right? So there are uh, currently two shelters um, in Northampton, uh, and one of them does provide day programming as well. As some of you might know, those were the contracts for those shelters. Their state contracts were held by ServiceNet previously. However, CSO, Clinical Support Options, um, is going to be the holder of those contracts starting April 1st. So there's currently a transition. Um, the new contract includes a bit of increased funding um, for day programming. Um, so one of the shelters will continue to provide day programming space. Um, and the idea is that the hub will be a secondary space as well for um, kind of day use. Uh, so short answer, yes, but there's some some uh, kind of nuance to it. So there are some other changes in the air. It's going to be a change of service providers. Um, and the place where it's going to provide some day programming is, is still going to be 43 Center Street. As of now, yes. Um, my understanding is that CSO is hopeful that at some point in the near future, we don't know exactly when, they would like to uh, sort of have one larger shelter rather than two smaller ones um, because it provides for greater efficiency and better quality of service, uh, more integration of um, the same sorts of things that we're doing at the hub. We're, I'm in very close communication with the folks who are at CSO running the homelessness services program. So um, yes, it's going to continue, still two shelters, hopefully at some point in the undetermined future, there will be one larger shelter. Right. Um, Gordon? Yeah, hi. Um, so one issue that we've talked about quite a lot it, through the partnership or gap that we've recognized is the the, the lack of um, centralized or coordinated help with housing search. Um, it's just not does it just not funded anywhere really unless you have like special sorts of needs like uh, uh, DDS or something like that or so you know when we've heard about the resiliency hub coming along we thought this would be the, like a great add-on to services is to create a place where people could go and, and look at find get help you know figuring out how to apply for not just subsidized housing but housing generally in the greater Northampton area so I just want to put that out there it's something that we had talked about is even maybe um, helping you know, like getting a you know CPA money for this is a seed money to support a project like that but I'm I know you're at least a year off year from opening your door so it's just an idea that I just wanted to put out there that we that, that's sort of what our interest has been in learning more about what the resiliency hub and whether it could be a home for that kind of service yeah thank you for bringing that up it's it's a really important need um and yes to any amounts of funding that can do anything to the hub. There's a bit of a misconception sometimes I've found that there's some magical pot of money that we're building the hub with. It really does not exist. The city's purchased a building and is securing some additional state funds to support the renovation, but it's really on us or on me to figure out how to get the rest of the money to essentially what we're working towards is creating a new civic institution, something that doesn't yet exist, a new organizational structure that will be independent and, and run on its own in partnership with the city and a number of different partners. Um, and some of those partners are also very interested in the same topic around housing navigation. We've been having ongoing conversations with Wayfinders, um, who has recently hired a housing navigator, as well as um, Safe Passage, who recently hired a housing navigator specifically for victims of domestic violence. And there's a couple other groups in town as well who have been interested in figuring out how to secure funds for more housing navigators, including CSO and Pamela's group, the Western Mass Network to End Homelessness. Um, so we definitely believe that housing navigators and navigators for accessing multiple types of services, not just housing, are really important. Um, I, I will say also in response to that, and it's one of the reasons I'm excited to be here today um, and hope to continue to, to join these meetings, um, is that, you know, frankly, there's just not enough housing to find. Um, we know that there is a at least a 17,000 unit gap in housing, uh, in affordable housing in our region. Um, and so, you know, we're really looking for other ways to support folks while they don't have housing. Um, a big part of what the hub is really all about is saying, 
hey, folks don't currently have housing, they're living on the streets, or they're in uh, some sort of vulnerable situation, you can come to the hub during the day to get access to services, we can help coordinate lots of different resources and services for you in a single place to make that easy, and essentially reduce harm and make those folks situations um, as livable as possible. The counterbalance to that is housing. Um, so we definitely need more housing and need to figure out how to do that and how to get people into those housing situations. Um, and in the meantime, the hub is essentially um, serving as a, a force to support folks who don't have housing or can't get into housing in the, in the very near term future. That's, that's a lot to take on. Other questions and thoughts? Uh, I just want to give a quick update. The, the building is not purchased technically yet. We're still doing the title search, uh, which hopefully shouldn't find anything. Uh, and the end of February is when we need to have a date for the actual purchase, but uh, providing no, nothing's going on with that. Uh, hopefully we'll give the building over. Okay, great. Thanks, Galad. I mean, uh, Bev has uh, her hand up. Yeah, I think someone else answered the question. Um, uh, what what the time frame is for this? But a sub part of that uh, that I'm just curious about is how much rehab you have to do. Yeah, I think Keith might be able to answer the rehab question better than me. Okay. Um, the architect um, who uh, we the city has used quite a lot, um, says it's about two thirds done. Um, oh. So structurally, the, the skeleton is quite intact, um, but there's some fitting out of the walls and some electrical um, and making it pretty um, that we'll need to do. Um, but, um, and, and just from uh, my standpoint, so uh, my department is giving like 500 grand for the purchase. Um, and then we're going to basically everything that's left over for next year is going to be going to rehab, but um, th th we're also going to be hopefully securing a bunch of um, state money to do the rehab and, um, you know, uh, plenty of um, um, people in high government has, have toured it and know about this and they're really excited about it. So I think there's a lot of support and I don't, I don't suspect we'll have a ton of problems with money, but who knows, that's still in the future, so. Well, it sounds like everything's moving forward, but if there's any, you know, vote of support or something that this group could provide along the way, uh, I, I think we'd probably be really interested in helping in any way. Definitely. I really appreciate that. And, and I would love to continue coming to these meetings and, and hopefully be able to bring things up if, if they arise. Um, you know, I think one other thing I'll just mention connected to affordable housing in the hub um, is that uh, part of some of the kind of vision for the hub has been around supporting folks to remain housed. Um, there's a, a situation that's that's been documented quite a few times of folks who are unhoused being put into housing um, or being given the opportunity to, to get access to housing. Um, and that disconnects them from their entire community. And sometimes folks will actually choose to leave the stable housing that they have the opportunity to secure in order to be close with their community again. Um, so it's thinking about how do we not only support folks if they don't have housing, but how do we support those folks who have just been able to um, get into housing? Um, and how do we at the same time use the hub as a space to help destigmatize what affordable housing is about? Um, so there's a lot of different kind of angles or aspects to what's gonna happen at the hub. Um, and a lot of that is still sort of in development now. Now that we have a, a building, um, we're really, as I mentioned, in a sort of new phase of the project. And uh, we're about to, we actually have an application out now. I'll put it in the chat. We're about to hire a community engagement coordinator who's going to be um, a full-time team member um, who's really going to be focused on working with us to better understand exactly how we, we best create the hub in a way that it serves the existing needs in the community. Um, and uh, that's that's something that we we hadn't done up till this point, honestly, because we we didn't want to make false promises, you know, without a, a big pot of money or a building. We don't want to go out and say, hey, we're building this thing. So now that we have the building, we're able to really start putting boots on the ground and move forward with um, kind of collectively developing the hub. So it's really of the people for the people. Um, I see two hands up. Uh, Gwen, Gwenervia, I, I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Gwen? 
Yep, that's okay. My name, my name is Gwen Evra, and you can call me Gwen. Um, and I'm a, just a citizen member of the of this of this group. And I apologize to everyone for being late, but I was in another meeting, and so I want to respond as I'm coming in because I I didn't hear the beginning part of this meeting, but I know that you're talking about the hub, which I'm really excited about, and also the upcoming single room occupancy program. I think is what you're talking about. Um, and also the pressing need for um, there to be some way to keep people warm, you know, during these cold months. And also in light of the fact that, you know, we do have, you know, we are a safe haven city, um, you know, just for so many reasons. So any meetings um, that you need anything or just to communicate or, um, maybe even volunteering at the hub or whatever, however I can support that sounds good to me. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I, thank uh, you. I can share more over email, but we have um, two kind of sets of meetings just to keep you all in the loop. There's a hub a coalition meeting that happens quarterly, so about every three months, um, and that brings together a lot of different nonprofits and social service agencies in the region who are partners or prospective partners to help provide services and resources at the hub, and that's a lot about getting everyone on the same page, um, sharing in-process work with folks and getting feedback from providers and frontline service staff who are working with um, unsheltered populations regularly and have a really good understanding of the need. Um, as well as community members who show up and um, local and state um, officials who attend as well. So that's a really big open meeting to get updates on everything that's going on with the hub and find out about more. And you're all welcome to join that. Um, and then there are also a few working groups that are focused on specific topics. Um, one focused on funding and development for the hub, one focused on public safety and accessibility, uh, one focused on organizational structure for, for the new um, sort of entity that will um, have kind of decision-making control at the hub. Um, as well as one around sort of research and learning. We're doing a lot of research ourselves into best practices to better understand other projects around the state and country who have done similar things to this in terms of coordinating multiple services right. in a so you can understand from them. Um, right. So Another thing that you mentioned is um, once people are here or do get here, they, they're really quite displaced. And so um, this is something that I experienced coming out out here and I I know what would have helped and I I know what I needed um, after being essentially on the streets for two years. Um, there needed to be some kind of transitional help there. And um, and that was really hard to find. And so I think that's an element that needs to be considered because believe it or not, <laughs> when you're living like a gypsy for a little while, it's kind of hard to settle down. So there are some transitions and you know a lot of trust and and different things that are happening during those transitions so thank Definitely. you yeah no I, I agree and i really appreciate you you sharing that personal background as well um and we're always looking for more folks who themselves have lived or living experience of being unsheltered or experiencing um, housing vulnerability anyway. So I would really encourage you to, to join the, the coalition calls and, and bring your voice to those conversations. Um, it's something we already really want to focus on and we can always use more um, support and perspective and experience there. And uh, Galad, how can we link to, to the coalition calls? Uh, I can, uh, I don't know who I should send it to, but I can put together a little email with some links. Keith, send it to Keith. Yes, yes, yes. We definitely need to have that. I think very interesting. Yeah. yeah um, Gwen, Gwen, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you from saying something? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you to Gilad for the work that he's doing and for this mission. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gilad. It's amazing. Does anybody else have a comment or a question for Galad before? We I was just going to offer something else. I mean, so, Galad, something you said earlier just sort of reminded me that one of the cornerstone services that we do at the partnership is, is public education around housing issues and homelessness. Um, so, for example, like when they uh, when they were proposing to build on uh, uh, Pleasant Street, the two projects that went up there, you know, we did do an op-ed. We've done op-eds around 40B in the past and other things as well. So I just... Um, I'm just wondering, do you feel there is um, 
opposition mounting to this being placed downtown? Do you, are, is, are you getting a sense of that? And, and can we provide some sort of education around that? Like one thing we regularly do is write um, op-ed pieces for the Gazette and we could coordinate something like that. Yeah, I really appreciate you offering that. Um, that would be great. Uh, to be honest, we haven't um, experienced much opposition and um, hopefully we won't. Um, we've had a few of the um, folks who live in apartment buildings just adjacent to the church that, that was almost purchased. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've told them, listen, there's going to be a lot of community engagement. We're going to make sure we listen to everyone's voices and make sure to address their concerns. Um, so I think a few local neighbors, like really within a block or two of there, have expressed some concerns. Uh, but other than that, we haven't. I've been really, just from my own past experience doing similar work, I was amazed at how many people are already on board um, in terms of this project and how many partners in the city want to contribute, want to be a part of that, um, as well as having the cities behind. I mean, it's it's a city initiative. Um, Community Action is really the managing partner working with the city to create the hub. Um, so I think that's really helped as well, that it's kind of an official city thing. But I'm sure there will be folks who are against this at some point. And if we can get out ahead of them and and um, share some some information, I think that would be that would be really helpful. Um, and, and I'd love to, maybe we can coordinate, you know, offline, I can share a little bit more about our timeline and sort of milestones when things might be happening, um, mm -hmm. and figure out what's kind of the most ideal time to do that. Um, sure. and, and the last thing I'll just mention, I think I mentioned um, earlier, but uh, it's, it's important to mention, if any of y'all know of really great local state or uh, federal or private funding opportunities to support work like this, um, really, please share any links at all. Um, while we are, we're really confident we're able to kind of establish the core of what the hub is, the more resources and funding we're able to bring together, the, the more we can provide out of there and kind of the broader vision um, we can work towards. Um, so we're, we're actively pursuing a number of different grants and state and local federal uh, funding opportunities, but we could always use more. So I don't know if you saw this, Galad, or anybody else, but as a Gazette reader myself, there was a letter to the editor from the, um, from the residents of the old school commons, including businesses and residents there, really supporting um, and welcoming their new neighbors or resilience hub. And I also wrote a response to that. That was a letter to the editor. Um, so I'm very like, I'm obviously, I'm old school. I'm newspaper focused when it comes to getting word out. There's a lot of other ways to, to get the word out. But that has been a prelude in the Gazette just very recently to the news of buying this building. And I thought that was that was a really good start. Definitely, yeah. Um, like I said, I haven't heard any like strong opposition. And I think that we uh, sort of understand the scope of the project and uh, really have a great team. Um, and a lot of folks at Community Action who have a lot of experience doing this sort of related work. So I think we'll be able to, and especially with the support of the city, I think we'll be able to um, really meet folks where they're at and address any concerns that come up and make sure that the hub isn't sort of stigmatized and seen as like the place where poor people go or the place where unhoused people go, but really genuinely a, a community center where you can access all types of resources. Well, I look forward to getting the link to the, um, to the meetings. And um, we look forward to having you or the community engagement quarter the coordinator back for updates. You're always welcome at this meeting. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Keith? Oh, I I thought Galad was Oh, waving. you were waving, waving goodbye. goodbye. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Galad. Um, okay. So we're already at other business, not anticipated. What could that be? Ace? Um, sorry, was the real estate transfer fee after the other business not anticipated? Um, I don't even know if we put that in this time, but you oh. certainly can go ahead. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. So I uh, was going to give an update last month, couldn't make it uh, update this month. Um, so uh, update one is uh, I have all of the information for the real estate sales over uh 2022, uh, so that data has been updated in the fee. Um, Amherst has just uh, 
is working on passing um, something similar, although their focus seems to be much more on having this fee apply to uh, sales for people who are not living in the houses that they're buying. Um, I am still talking uh, with the city councilors, Mary and Jarrett, um, who are testing the waters to see about mayoral support before they continue further. Um, but uh, some, some things have developed and are happening. Comments or questions? Ace, did we um uh do we have access to that data or um can you share it with us? Um I can I can reshare it. Um it is the uh same form that I had before. Um I will uh copy the link into chat now and I will email it to you uh after this meeting as well. Well, cool. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ace. Um, I did, I did, um, write to Lindsay Sabadoza around an update for the, um, broker fee, right? But I haven't heard back and I will try that again. I think they've been busy with the new legislative session, et cetera. Other, other business not anticipating? Anticipating? I actually had a question about the real estate uh, fee. I've been wondering who to ask this question to, and maybe this is the group. Um, I've heard um, anecdotally from landlords that they're like, well, if the real estate fee, like if they're not allowed to charge the fee, they'll just up the prices of rent. Um, and so it won't actually change the situation. Is there any understanding of how to address that or um, some way to reduce that? From I think that's a red herring. And first of all, we're talking about a fee which is nominally seven to eight, seven hundred to eight thousand dollars, which is a one-time fee, which I think a landlord is in a better position to absorb. They want to amortize that over a, a year's rent, fine. But I don't think it's really going to change. It's 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 who really benefits from the from the service. Um, landlords benefit. They they basically getting free screening of tenants, and the tenants paying for their own screening, and it doesn't seem fair. Um, that's that's what it comes down to. No, I, I agree. I Unfortunately, uh, Eric Sewer is my landlord. And when I signed the lease, I asked him about this. And he was like, well, I can tell you right now, we're just going to raise the fees. We're, I mean, we're going to raise the rent. You know, he's like, I need to make the same amount of money. So it, it being such a large landlord, well, the, I imagine he, others might do the I same. Mean, I mean, I'd love to debate Eric on this, but it's he's it's it, they can bear the cost much better than a tenant can. And it's not a lot of money for a landlord, but it means a lot to a tenant. And I'm preaching to the choir, but that's my I, response. <laughs> I, I agree, and but I'm saying he won't, and other landlords yeah. won't. They're just going to raise the rent. So is there a way well, to prevent that from essentially maintaining the same high cost for, for tenants? So there's not anything built into the bill as currently written to do this. Uh, other measures could certainly be taken. Uh, along the line of something like rent control, it's currently outside of the scope of this bill by itself. Um, it, as an additional note, uh, I personally am a landlord and while I don't use broker services, I could definitely see landlords both passing costs on to tenants and using this as an excuse to raise rents. That said, there's a reason why we take out loans for large purchases rather than doing lump sums. Uh, even allowing for landlords raising the cost, it does still increase access in that a higher rent is still more accessible than a large lump sum. So uh, additionally, landlords can take it off of their taxes, but I'm sure Sewer is doing that already anyway. The business expense, they can write it off. Thank you, I really appreciate those answers. Thanks, thanks Galad. All right, anybody else? Anything else? Are we, are we ready to adjourn? You speak now. Move to adjourn. Anybody second? I'll second that. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for attending. All of you, Glad, thank you for being here. 
Um, and we're doing some good work and we will meet again in a month on March 6th, I think it is actually, right? Yep. Okay, thank you. Have a Bye good everyone. night. Have a good month.